I want to be the very best, but I lose all the time. Can this show get me some new writers? How could I lose the Catholic League and then win a pity tournament? Hopefully, this new scenario won't nerf me so much. Yeah, soldiers. So for a bit of an experiment, I am going to do what if Ash was born in Kalos. I want to see how people react to something like this, and I've seen Pokemon as popping up, and let's just say you could call me intrigued. Now, let's get into this, but before I do, shout out to Drew, my editor, for ending this video, and stay tuned for Legacy and the Legacy movie, which will co probably come out this week, and maybe Legacy movie will come out on Saturday or maybe Sunday, who knows. And not only that, stay tuned for some other videos in between, so yeah, stay, get ready for those. Anyways, to conclude the, the usual checklist, watch my community tab like a hawk, donate to my Patreon, which is linked in the description, follow me on Twitch, which is linked in the description for my podcast streams, Twitter, Adam Stage 4, Instagram, Amy underscore Stage 4, and join me the Discord server, all of which are in the description. And I will give you all reasons to follow slash join the ladder free at the end of the video, so watch until the end. And finally, if you have any fanfics you think I should read for my channel, be it NAR to MHA, DBZ, or something else, or One Piece, or something like that, comment down the name of the fanfic. Since this is a new series, let's just jump into the story. Alright, so I think the obvious question here is how Ash is going to be born in Kalos. Well, Pokemon has so little background on Ash, including where in the hell his father is, that it is pretty easy for him to be born in a different region without it causing a bunch of plot holes. But back to Ash's fire for a quick second, where is his father? And come to think of it, where are the dads for like all the other Pokemon protagonists in the games? Did all of them except for Norman dip so they didn't have to pay child support like Asuma? Like seriously, where are they? Anyways, we'll switch Delia from Kanto to Kalos since there is no background on her, so we can do whatever we want. Yeah, Pokemon does not really have the best narrative around the characters in the world, or the best writing. That's where I come in. Anyways, we'll see the first major change in the story, which is since Ash is born in Kalos, this means he's in the same region as Serena. Serena and Ash will grow up in the same town together, and both will end up participating in Oak Summer Camp. And you guessed it, Serena develops a crush on Ash as a result. Though, this time, it might actually fester into something for more than one series. They might do something in Journeys, but at this point, I don't know. Ash will grow up and stuff, and will get ready for his journey to become a Pokemon trainer, with his relative goals unchanged because I don't think him changing regions would stop him from wanting to become a Pokemon master. Like, it's part of Ash's character at this point, and it's not going to change if he's raised by the same parent. It, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Or, excuse me, I should say parent because Ash's father doesn't exist! Anyways. I am going to make this clear. I am not going to give Ash a Pikachu as his starter. Maybe later on or something since there are Pikachus and Kalos, but for this series, I would like all the stars from Kalos to be used and the trainers to be significant. What I mean by this is when Ash and Gary began their journeys in the original series, they were the only trainers earning gym badges as the other two Pallet Town trainers straight up quit. And we never heard from them. Again. Let's just say for the story that ain't happening, especially since I'm going to make this story more so modeled after the X and Y anime and the X and Y games. The Serena part, you can already guess, is from the anime, so let's move on to a game event. Ash will wake up on his 10th birthday by his mom, and he'll be greeted by his neighbors, his childhood friend Serena, and Shauna, a girl who became his friend last year. Ash will be told by Serena and Shauna to meet them at the square, and Ash will do so, and will meet two other dudes in Tierno and Trevor. Shauna and Serena and Ash will be the ones selecting stars, since Tierno and Trevor already got their own. Ash will let the ladies select their stars, what a gentleman, and Serena will select Fennekin, while Shauna will select Chesspin. This is fine, as Ash will select the star he won all along, which is Froki. You all knew this was coming. You all knew this was 100% coming. Froki evolves into Greninja, which is Ash's most iconic Pokemon ever, especially with the Ash Greninja form. Speaking of Ash Greninja, stay tuned for that. Anyways, Ash will pack up, say goodbye to his mom, and will head out on the road, and will be joined by Serena as she fights a blushing storm in order to ask Ash if she can join him on this journey, which Ash is like, sure, why not? 
All right, time for our question of the day. What is your favorite Pokemon game? Let me know in the comments below. For me, it is Black and White 2. Oh yeah, I also wanna make this a little bit clear here. I'm probably going to have Serena still stuck on her path to becoming a Pokemon Showcase trainer, I guess. But I think that's fine because Serena honestly was pretty cool in those arcs. And honestly, I'd rather have her be that than a rival because the next white games, Serena slash Callum were literally the worst rivals in Pokemon history. While as a companion and potential love interest, Serena was probably a pretty good character in my opinion. But that's just me. So I would probably rather have her in this type of role here, especially since I can develop chemistry between these two characters as the story continues on. And I think a lot of you will agree that I made the right decision. Anyways, Ash encounters his first Pokemon in the Kalos region and it is a Fletchling. Yes, we are continuing the trend of Ash getting every single early bird Pokemon, but then again, Talonflame is a pretty great Pokemon. And Ash will actually succeed in catching the Fletchling for two reasons. One, his star actually listens to him, which was not the case with Pikachu before the Spearow incident. And two, he has a companion that is going to be like, Yo, shouldn't you try to catch that Pokemon? And Ash will snap out of his arrogance when he beats that Fletchling and ends up catching it in a Pokeball. It does pay to have people travel with you, just saying. So yeah, Ash's journey is off to a great start. Now, one more thing I want to say real quick. I will be using the entire Kalos Dex. Not just Kalos Pokemon, but Pokemon that are in the Kalos Dex in the X and Y games. Meaning, Ash has access to like 450 Pokemon minus legendaries because it'd be very, very weird to give Ash legendaries in this part of the story. Ash and Serena will head into the forest, meet up with Shauna and the gang. All of them will go through the forest together and it's kind of forgettable as I don't think there is a Pokemon that fits Ash at this point except Pikachu. And I would prefer to save Ash getting a Pikachu if he goes to a region like Kanto in this story. Oh yeah, and also Pikachu has a 6% encounter rate in Santaloon Forest. So it would be very hard for him to catch one in the first place. There is a Pokemon that does fit Serena though, and it is Scatterbug, which Serena finds to be very cute. And after some struggles, she is able to catch it. I really, really like Vivalon for Serena, especially for what she does in the canon story, the Pokemon showcases. And while you could say it is not the strongest Pokemon out there, I mean, that's not what we're aiming for Serena. We're aiming for someone who's pretty great at Pokemon showcases, so it doesn't really matter. And while you could argue that Serena wouldn't catch a Pokemon at this point, considering the amount of Pokemon she had on her by the end of the series, remember, Ash is with her, and with Ash's encouragement and him catching his first Pokemon, Serena can believe she can capture a Pokemon too. The crush motivation can be corny sometimes, but it definitely, definitely works. Anyways, Route 3 comes along and goes as nothing significant happens there, and Ash will head to Santolin City. Ash will head to the Pokemon Center to heal up his Pokemon, and while he is at it, he will register for the Kalos League, and Ash will learn there is a gym in the city, and Ash will decide to challenge the gym. He will face off against the gym leader Viola, and the battle will begin. Viola sends out Surskid, and Ash will send out Froki. The battle will begin. Now here I had to make a decision of whether I would give Viola her anime moveset or her game moveset. For her Surskit, I decided to sell on a mix, which means this Surskit will have Ice Beam, Signal Beam, Quick Attack, Bubble Beam, and Protect, as this Pokemon was shown to know 5 freaking moves in the anime. At this point, Ash's Froakie has Bubble, Quick Attack, Pound, and Growl. The battle will begin and Ash will launch a Bubble Attack and Viola will use Protect, and then Ash will then tell his Pokemon to use Quick Attack, which Viola will call her Surskit to use the same move as well, and both Pokemon are even. Surskit will then use Signal Beam, and Ash will call Froki to dodge it, which Froki will do, and Froki will use Quick Attack again, and it will hit the Surskit, but Surskit will counter Bubble Beam, which will do damage on Froki as well. Eventually, as the battle goes on, both Pokemon are shown to be even, but they are also getting exhausted. Both Pokemon will eventually knock each other out with a quick attack, and it is a tie. 
Ash and Veal will then call out their last Pokemon, and it is Vivalon and Fletchlane. Vivalon has Sleep Powder, Psychic, Gust, and Solar Beam. I decided to go with the Ami move set because that is definitely a tough move set, better than freaking Infestation. Short story here, Ash will lose as despite having the type advantage and Fletchlane learning Ember and knowing Peck, along with its other moves Growl and Quick Attack, Vivalon knows Psychic, Sleep Powder, and Solar Beam, and Ash's Fletchlane is not fast enough to dodge all those attacks. Namely, the Sleep Powder. Ash will lose, though Viola congratulates him on a good match, and he can ask for a rematch and try again next time. Ash nods and will go heal his Pokemon, wondering what to do next. Then, Viola's sister, Alexa, who saw Ash's battle, tells him to go to Route 22 to train to prepare for a rematch. On the way, Ash catches a Litlia, which could be a good Pokemon to use against Viola. You might be clamoring right now for another certain Pokemon that can be found on Route 22, which would be Riolu, which can evolve into Lucario. And I say, ah, 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 not yet. After a bit of training, Ash and Viola will have a rematch. The Pokemon Ash uses will be the same, as he wants Froakie and Fletchling to have some revenge. In the rematch against Surskit, Froakie this time will have the upper hand and will take the Pokemon down with a combination of his new move Water Gun and Quick Attack. It would do some damage to Vivalon via Water Gun and Quick Attack before being taken down by a Psychic and then a Solar Beam. Ash will then send out his Fletchling and this time both Pokemon are evenly matched in terms of speed, however Vivalon has taken some damage so Fletchling has a slight edge here. The battle is tough as both Pokemon fight very hard. However, after Fletchling hits Vivalon with an Ember that burns it, Fletchling will finish off the Pokemon with a Peck Quick Attack combo, winning Ash's first Gym Badge. Ash is pretty happy and Serena hugs Ash in celebration and Ash will feel something as a result of that hug. But because our boy is incredibly dense, he does not know what that feeling is. Alexa will tell Ash to head to Grand City for his next Gym Badge, which is convenient as Ash gets a holographic call from Professor Sycamore to head to Lumio City to meet with him, which is on the way to Grand City. Ash and Serena will comply and they'll head to Lumio City and what will happen next? Find out in the next part, though I will leave one question here before I head to the outro. What gender do you want Litleo to be? Because it has different forms when it's either male or female. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching part one of What If Ash Was Born in Kalos. I do like Pokemon What Ifs, and these are kind of making me want to go back to write my fanfic, which I should have finished chapter four a long time ago, but things happen sometimes. Anyway, stay tuned for Legacy and whatever videos come out this week, and stay tuned for a lot of other content on the way as well as a 50k subspecial, which should be pretty good. And if you have any fanfics I should read, again, tell me the name of the fanfic. Watch my community talk like a hawk, that's important. And finally, follow me on Twitter for another way to get notified of my videos, as well as interact with me on my most active platform. Instagram for memes and just memes, but maybe the occasional answer to the DM. And finally, join my Discord server for access to my community. These are all great ways for you guys to interact with me, so again, follow me on all of my social media platforms. Shout out to my town patrons, their names on screen, and my federal patron, Anguish, and my federal patron, Gabe Tidwell. If you want to support me and get rewards to shouts like these, go to my Patreon, which is linked in the description. Support is as low as $1 per month. Let's get to 60k, then 70k, then 80k, then 90k, then 100k, and that is all I have to say. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn notifications, and share the video. This has been your boy, the Anime Sage. Sign out, peace, your ha. Sending shakles is out. Bye bye. Peace.